legendary woman from Greek mythology, Princess Niobe, is remembered as being a bereaved mother as her pride and lack of submission to the gods led her to lose all 12 of her children. It may seem superstitious, but giving her name to a wonderful three-masted bark might seem like a bad omen of the ship's tragic end. The Niobe was built in 1913 under the name Morten Jensen as a four-masted schooner in Frederikshavn, Denmark. The ship displaced about 645 tons with a GRT of 367 tons and an NRT of 259 tons. It was equipped with an auxiliary engine of 160 horsepower. The Danish ship owner operated the vessel for less than three years. In 1916, she was sold to Norway and renamed Tyholm. On November of that year, while carrying mine timber to England, she was captured in British waters by the German submarine UB-41 and claimed as a prize. She was then first used as an auxiliary light ship named Aldebaran until 1921. In that year, she was transferred to the Navy of the German Republic, Reichsmarine, and started serving as a naval school ship. Her first commander was Felix von Lückner, German naval officer and author that became internationally popular through the narration of his exploits, commanding the sailing merchant raider SMS Seeadler between 1916 and 1917. The Niobe was chartered to a film production company in 1922 and shortly named Schwalbe. After that, she was thoroughly modernized and rigged as a three-masted bark. She measured 57.8 meters in length overall, 46.1 meters without the bowsprit, 9.17 meters in width, and 5.2 meters draft. The height of the main mast was 34.8 meters and she carried 15 sails with 983 square meters of total sail area. She was commissioned on the 30th of April 1923 under the name Niobe, previously borne by a wooden frigate of British construction, which had been a training ship in the Prussian and then Imperial Navy in the years 1861 to 1890. The bark was returned to her duty as school ship in late 1923. She was operated by a crew of 34 and could train up to 80 cadets. Officers and sailors were selected so that they could pass on to the trainees a maximum of knowledge and experience. During the navigation season, the ship made three training cruises, each lasting from two to three and a half months. Around 200 seamen candidates passed through her decks each year. Initially, they sailed mainly on the Baltic and North Seas. Later, the ship also called at Scandinavian and Spanish ports. The bark was commanded successively by Captain Erwin Wassner, submariner, achieved the rank of rear admiral, and Captain Raoul Mewis, commander of a torpedo boat and torpedo boat flotilla, discharged from service in 1943 in the rank of admiral. Finally, the last was Captain Heinrich Rufus, born in 1895, who joined the Kaiserliche Marine in 1913. He served on the armored cruiser Victoria Louise and the light cruisers Rostock, Regensburg, and Kohlberg. After a crash course during the war, he became a second lieutenant and watch officer in the torpedo boat flotilla. In 1917, he survived the sinking of the torpedo boat S-64 on a mine. After the war, he commanded the torpedo boats T-153 and T-157. On Niobe, he was initially the head of training and in February 1932, he took command. On July 1, 1932, the officer candidates of the 1932 class, as well as a group of non-commissioned officer candidates, were assigned to the Niobe. Under the experienced commander, Heinrich Rufus, the training officers, and the non-commissioned officer instructors, the tough athletic training in rigging began. First on the pier in Kiel, with boarding and sailing exercises. Provisional sail setting and lowering, boarding according to the stopwatch, moving on and around the yards at lofty heights placed great demands on the young people, who enthusiastically learned the first steps in their chosen profession as a seaman. Soon they went to Keel Bay to practice. After three weeks, the ship was able to set sail for the eastern and northern Baltic Sea. Swinemunde, Wisby, and other traditional places on the Baltic Sea were the destinations. On July 24th, the Niobe set sail from Kiel. On the evening of the 25th, the ship anchored west of Feymarn. The cadets were excited to experience their first real sea voyage. They had gotten used to the cramped conditions on board. On July 26th, the ship weighed anchor. The boys worked on the capstan to raise the anchor by hand. 
it was all a great experience. The weather was good and light. With southeasterly winds of four to five Beaufort, Bark headed east into the Femarn belt. With full sails on the port bow, the ship sailed well. Shortly after 12, she turned to a southeasterly course and starboard bow. The Femarn lightship was in sight ahead. As the wind turned further to the right, ship turned again to port bow before 14 Heimlerd. The work was carried out by the starboard watch, which was on standby on deck. Shortly before, the then famous new flying boat Doe X, the pride of the nation, had passed the ship. The crew watched the distant flying boat with admiration, as did the many spectators who had gathered on the shore, not only to wave to the bark, but also to take a look at what was then the largest aircraft in the world. Within half an hour, dark clouds were gathering over the island of Feymarn, but there were no other signs of a weather breakdown. The ship continued her sail handling and flag signaling exercises. The duty watch was responsible for this. Signals were exchanged with the lightship Feymarn belt. The two other watches held afternoon navigation lessons. Due to the high temperature, the officer of the watch authorized the opening of all the skylights in the classrooms, the bulkheads of the companionways and the portholes. At 1415, the Niobe, which had just secured her top gallant sails, passed the lightship. The distance was about half a nautical mile. At around 1430, while the crew was still clearing the flags, a strong thunderstorm started with wind force seven from the south, later turning to the southwest with rain. It was a white squall. Immediately afterwards, the watch reported to lightship Captain Thompson that Niobe had capsized. I could only see part of the ship sticking out of the water. Captain Thompson later reported in his report, the motor lifeboat of my lightship was launched immediately. In view of the threatening weather conditions, I felt it necessary to get into the boat myself and personally lead the rescue operation as quickly as possible. In order to alert the steamer Therese Rus, which had just passed by, to the accident, I had airborne sound signals given. The steamer, however, had observed the accident itself, immediately turned towards the accident site and launched boats. The steamer's boat was towed by the lightship's motorboat. When it arrived at the accident site, the lightship's boat rescued 19 men, including the commander. All of the victims drifted in a circle of about 50 to 100 meters, some with life jackets, some without. Others clung to the ship's inventory and stayed above water in this way. The actual rescue operation was completed in 30 minutes. The rescued people were put on the steamer to raise Russ. The ship sunk in minutes. The stern was the first to sink below the water surface. Water quickly penetrated the interior of the ship through the partially open portholes and the companionways. Only six men managed to get out from the lower deck. 69 officers, non-commissioned officers, and sailors drowned. Only 40 men could be rescued. The commander, Heinrich Rufus, was among those rescued. He had to answer to the court-martial of the commander of the reconnaissance forces and was acquitted after hearing from many witnesses and well-known experts. The commander had become the victim of a higher power over which he was powerless. That was what the verdict stated. In August 1932, the Niobe was salvaged and towed to Kiel. Here, the remains of the wreck were examined in detail, and 50 sailors from the Niobe's crew were found and buried in the Kiel North Cemetery, or returned to their homeland. 19 members of the crew were never found and have fallen victim to the sea to this day. The wreck was deemed irreparable and ceremonially sunk in the Baltic Sea by a torpedo from the torpedo boat Jaguar on September 18, 1933, northeast of the Stolpe Bank in presence of a large part of the German Navy. Flags were lowered to half-mast from Flensburg to Constance as a public outpouring of grief gripped the nation. The Prussian state mint issued a Niobe memorial coin to help raise money for a replacement ship and soon earned 200,000 Reichsmarks towards the effort and spurred the building of the new sailing training ship Gorch Fock in a record 100 days.